In the world of AI writing assistants, there are a lot to choose from and a lot of great ones at that. But today we want to go over one of the top ones out there and that's WriteSonic. So in this video, we're going to go over some of the features of WriteSonic, explain how it works and why it's so good. And at the very end, we're going to put it head to head against ChatGPT so that you can compare them side by side. Now I'm not going to go over all of the features that are available in WriteSonic because there are so many. So if you want a more in-depth review of it, go down into the video description below. There's an amazing blog article that covers covers a lot more details about WriteSonic, such as all of the features and a lot of the technology, how it works and all that, but we're not going to dive into the nitty gritty. This is just a basic overview to kind of show you WriteSonic and all the things that it can do. Getting started with WriteSonic is extremely easy. Just go to WriteSonic.com. From there, you'll be able to set up a free account where you can start using it for yourself right away before you decide if you want to pay for it. We'll talk about paid features later, but for now, WriteSonic.com. So right off the bat, one of my absolute favorite things about WriteSonic as a whole is just how easy its user interface is to use. Not every AI tool is that way, but WriteSonic is super easy to jump into and try out. So really it's as easy as looking for what kind of prompt you want it to write and then going from there. So let's say we want to create a blog title. We can go down to article and blog, AI blog titles, and then you kind of just go from here. You really just follow it step by step through to kind of create what you want. Let's go back to WriteSonic Home. Same thing goes for really anything. You can do LinkedIn ads, Google ads. Here's your general writing prompts. We can scroll through here and the list goes on and on. There's so much. So if we wanted to create an article here, we can just go in here, create whatever we want the topic to be, put in your keywords, and really it's as easy as that. It'll give you ideas, outline, etc. cetera. Um, and WriteSonic is just super easy to use, which is one of my favorite things about it. Since we're here, let's also talk about ChatSonic real quick. So ChatSonic here is your personalized AI chatbot, as it says right here at the top. And this right here is kind of the competition to ChatGPT. Now, the other thing that they have here as well is it's called BotSonic. So if you click this, this is their conversational AI chatbot designed for customer interactions. This I could do an entire tutorial on on itself because there's so much to it. I'm not going to go super deep into that. Uh, again, I'm going to keep saying it, but I'm going to reference the blog article down below. It's got more information if you're interested in this part of it, but we're not going to go super deep into that because that would take forever. So while we're here, let's talk about pricing real quick. So on a free trial account, you are limited to 10,000 words a month. You can kind of customize your plans here. So the pro plan that they start out with gives you 300,000 words a month, and you can kind of tailor this to how many words you need, um, upwards to 15 million words a month, I guess, um, which I don't need that many. But if you do, there it is. And if you do want to upgrade from a pro plan, you can just go down below to where it says upgrade, click it, and then you can kind of go from here. So there are two different options here also to make note of. You can switch between monthly and annual, of course, but the superior and the premium is something that throws a lot of people off. So superior and premium is just kind of the GPT version that it's using. So premium uses GPT 3.5, superior uses GPT 4. What these basically are is the quality in which the AI uses to generate your prompts. GPT 4 is just a little higher quality than 3.5. So if you are wanting really rich text, especially if you're doing a lot of articles, then you'll probably want to look into how much words you can get out of GPT-4 with these. So let's jump into that head-to-head -head I talked about, putting this against ChatGPT, throw them in the ring and see what comes out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a product description here to kind of show how that works. So we'll go to product descriptions. It's a super popular one and it's awesome. Uh, I've played around with a lot of these tools myself and product descriptions. It's really impressive the stuff that it can write out. So let's go ahead and do the service name of WordPress web design. And then let's give the product service characteristics here real quick. So here's kind of the description of what our product is. So we're offering it's WordPress web design. Here's kind of what we do. And then for the tone of voice, you can kind of determine what type of description it's going to write out for you. Since we're doing a business product description, uh, we want this to be a professional tone of voice. That's just what I'm putting here. So just kind of cater this to your business itself. Now we'll type in some keywords for it. We'll do WordPress development, web design, and those would probably be enough for our keywords. If you don't know which ones you want to use as well, you can kind of search for keywords. So if we want to do like web design, search, here's some keywords that a lot of people use and kind of just give you some ideas, which this is also a powerful tool and so right, especially if you're dealing with like SEO and putting your stuff out there. So this is good to use, but for now we'll just use these to keep it simple. So then there's the quality type and these are what we talked about earlier between premium and superior. We'll just use premium for now. That's going to be based off of GPT 3.5. So then on the very bottom left, it's how many prompts you want it to do. We're going to do two and then we will generate this. So once you click generate, you'll see that it'll start to work and then it'll generate our copy. I said I was going to do two, but then I did three anyway. So here's the three that it came out with. So it came up with three different ones. One's 103 words, one's 123 and 179. And you can see they're very well written. Um, I'm, I'm always super... Uh, 
excited and blown away by how good these come out. Um, but here, give us our three prompts. So we're going to jump over here to ChatGPT, give it a similar prompt as the one that I just did in Write Sonic, and let's see what it comes up with here. So I told it to make our product description and let's see what it says. Now you can see right off the bat that it is wordier than our other one here. Um, it's like about 328 words. I just had it count in a, a word checker. Um, and I find this happens a lot with ChatGPT is a lot of them are just wordier and a little more, I don't want to say robotic, but that's the only way that it can kind of describe it. Um, it seems more, I guess, sterile and it doesn't have the personality that a lot of stuff you get with Right Sonic. And that is one thing I really, really love with Right Sonic is those different personalities we talked about. You can really cater your copy to your target audience. Copy that you're going to write for a local flower shop is going to have a lot different personality than a web development agency. So being able to cater those is very important in my opinion. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the chat GPT response that it gave us, um, just kind of comparing the two. So another thing also that I wanted to do between these two is run them through an AI detector. I recently just did a video on all of the best AI detectors, which you can go check out on your own. Uh, so I'm just gonna use zero GPT because I had it open. Um, and so this is the chat GPT prompt that I ran it through. And you can see that it detected 97.55% is GPT. I ran a similar one from the right Sonic that we got and it detected 80% or so. So you can see right off the bat, it sounds a little more natural and uh, human sounding, which is nice, especially if, if you are using this for your professional business. Having something that doesn't sound like it was written by AI is a benefit. If you're wanting that to be even better, if you are looking for more natural sounding things, that's where that superior GPT-4 comes into play on the more premium plans. So that's another thing to think about uh, when you're creating stuff with Write Sonic. So between ChatGPT and Write Sonic, which one's the lunar? I have to give it to Write Sonic. I think just having the flexibility and the power to write a lot of different copy, the user interface is amazing and just the powerful tools that it has uh right sonic is a clear winner to me so for me the winner goes to right sonic so there you have the basics of right sonic how to use it that should be enough to get you started again if you're looking for more advanced features check the blog article down in the video description below it goes into more in depth on the technology of right sonic more comparisons between it and chat gpt and other ai writers out there so definitely give the blog article a read thank you so much for watching this video i greatly appreciate it before you go though make sure you like this video subscribe to our channel we have a lot more content coming out, especially in regards to AI content. We got more how-to videos coming out, tutorials, uh, comparison videos, best tools. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out and we'll see you in the next video.